Hi, let's talk system and surroundings. In principle, this is a very easy concept, but it also has three interesting wrinkles to it. So what we mean by that is let's take the entire universe. It's a big space, the entire universe. And let's imagine there's a small part of it you're interested in. That volume or that space that you're interested in, we would call it our system. And everything else around it is the surroundings. So system plus surroundings equals the whole universe. Let's start with an example. We have a pot. That pot can be our system. So I'm interested in this pot and everything around it, the room and the city and the state and the continent and the planet Earth is the surroundings. Obviously, some of the surroundings are more germane than others, but as a theoretical concept in thermodynamics, the whole universe is system plus surroundings. So if I know my system, then I know my surroundings. Conversely, if I know my surroundings, I know my system. Okay, so point one, we've mapped out some physical space in the universe, and we've called that our uh, system. Uh, during the course of some change of process, that volume of what we've mapped out can change, like a balloon expanding uh, or a balloon contracting. Um, the balloon would be our system, so the volume doesn't have to be fixed, but there's some volume, and we have a uh, a barrier between that volume and the surroundings. Now, the first point is to talk about what type of barrier that is. So in the case of the pot filled with water uh, open to the room um, and starting to, to heat it, well, we would call that an open system because two things can exchange. One, because it's open to the room, water mass, water molecules can move between the system and the surroundings. And two, because we're starting to warm it and the water's getting hot, energy or joules can exchange between the system and the surroundings. So an open system allows both mass and energy to exchange between the system and the surroundings. Now, if I come along and put a lid on this pot of water as I continue to warm it, well now mass or molecules can no longer exchange between the system and the surroundings. But still, through the metal walls, I can exchange energy if the pot's getting hot, um, then uh, joules will uh, undergo heat transfer to the surroundings. So we call that a closed system. Closed system, energy can exchange, but mass cannot. And then finally, uh, there's a possibility if I have this highly insulated and lots of insulation ready for the winter, well, in that case, we still have no mass exchanging because there's still a lid on it. But now, uh, also because there's so much insulation, there'll be no heat transfer, no joules. So we'll call that an isolated system. For all intents and purposes, the system doesn't even know that the surroundings uh, exist in the isolated system. Keep in mind that this barrier around the system does not necessarily have to be a physical barrier. It can even be just a theoretical barrier, a way you think about a system and do a dashed line around it. But whatever you map out with that dashed line, um, even if it's not a physical barrier, you then define it as one of an open system, closed system, or isolated system, depending on whether you're going to allow mass to transfer across that uh, 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 barrier that you've mapped out or and or energy to uh, go through that barrier, even if it's not a physical barrier, just an intellectual barrier uh, that maps out some volume in space. Okay, the second point of three that makes system surroundings a little complicated is what if I want to talk about interactions between things. So I've got the pot, and in this case, I'm going to put a cup and I mentioned their interactions, uh, hot water inside the pot, um, some water that's still cold inside the uh, mug. Um, so I'm interested in both the pot as a system and the mug as a system. So I now have two systems, system one, system two. I'm interested in the barrier that separates them, which could be closed, open, or isolated. And then these two systems together are immersed in the rest of the universe and the surroundings. And then I would be interested in whether the uh, uh, a mug is closed, open, or isolated with respect to the surroundings, and whether the pot is closed, open, or isolated with respect to the surroundings. So there I have three types of interactions, or three types of barriers to describe. I have the barrier between the mug and the pot to define as closed, open, or um, isolated. And similarly, I have that definition to make for the mug with the surroundings and the pot with the surroundings. Okay, so point number three of why system and surroundings can end up being a little complicated. Um, I can define, for example, a system that is my circulatory system, my heart, my arteries, my veins, 
And that system, which is quite complicated, um, lots of branching, lots of tentacles, but that system uh, is within, in this case, my human body. I can define my human body as system two, say, everything except the circulatory system. And then my surroundings could be everything outside the human body, for example. But the reason that's a little complicated is because um, in this case, I've said, yes, there is a barrier of the circulatory system with the rest of my body. I've defined that as my system, but I haven't necessarily given you a detailed mapping of all of it. But nevertheless, I've defined that as my system and that's fine too. And I can talk about exchanges of mass and energy and talk about my circulatory system as open, closed or isolated. The real circulatory system is obviously an open system that exchanges mass and um, uh, uh, energy with the other tissues around to the tissues of the body. So in review, we introduced system and surroundings and talked about the whole universe as system plus surroundings and the point of interest to you, what you're actually interested in, well, that is by definition the system. If you're interested in there are nuances to that, we discussed three nuances to that. We discussed how the barrier around your system, which may or may not be a physical barrier, it could be an intellectual barrier, um, whether it's allowed to exchange uh, uh, energy and mass, and therefore defining that system's interactions as open, closed, or isolated. And we said, if you're interested in more than one thing, then you can have uh, uh, two systems. So we added some nuance to that, or more systems. Um, you have as many systems as you need to describe the problem of interest to you. And there are closed, open, or uh, isolated interactions with every other system that you bring in to your description, and all of those with the surroundings as well. So you can end up with a lot of interactions systems and surroundings. Acabou.